What do you do for a living? Um, I am a documentarian. Oh, fun. Okay. Uh, um, like, uh, it's kind of like a uh, memoir, uh, essay, um, In his days of youth and childhood, John used to shoot a film every day and keep footage of these films to himself. It sounds maybe kooky, but I would love for you sometimes in your life to like in your head be like, I should put the camera down right now in this situation. I should just be John. What seemed like an unhealthy obsession to a few turned out into this surprising and immensely rewatchable and thought-provoking deep dive into a character that becomes relatable in ways mainstream television has never really made us feel. You settle down and get a spot with a good view of the city, and you're excited to finally show off everything that you learned. Couple this with John's overarching voice that refers to himself as you, as if the lines between us, the viewer, and him, the subject, are being blurred. He submerges his perspective into our eyes, and he invites us to feel the way he feels about things. Upon experiencing John's approach, what one can observe is the way he uses his camera as a bridge between what he has to say and what the world has in store for him. The outside world is conveyed through the cinematographic eye and how it sees the world in front of the camera. The internal world of John Wilson is layered onto this footage hey, New York. using John's voice and the editing of the hands behind the camera. This triggers a journey of several how-to episodes Taking us into believing that they are lifestyle manuals, but where the relation between our two worlds matures and develops. Instead of giving us tips to living in a big city, this journey becomes about how John undergoes a process that psychoanalyst Carl Jung calls individuation, a process of integrating symbols of the collective unconscious into a person to make them a whole personality. In other words, the Self with a capital S. This essay will try to locate John Wilson's self by interpreting the design of a series through themes and stages in Carl Jung's individuation process. The first episode of the series, titled How to Make Small Talk, touches upon a recent separation that John has had from his girlfriend and it thereafter entails him going on a solo vacation to Cancun. What is interesting is this first episode goes from conveying John's New York City loneliness to characterizing a thorough isolation. When John realizes his serene hotel at Cancun turns out to be surprisingly houseful with a superficial and loud series of MTV parties going on. It turned out to be a rowdy concert that was airing live on MTV. Do note that this is the first time John expresses a strong opinion about the people around him. What follows is a top crowd shot of John being visibly disoriented amidst the crowds at the concert and authorities asking him to fall in line with them. This is the first climactic shot that defines John's personal mental state as an individual in the midst of a lot of people dancing to the tunes of a worshipped overlord, a culture that makes him uncomfortable and alienated. And as we move on, episodes 2 and 3 go even deeper into the personal issues John deals with, giving us a bigger picture about what it is that disenchants John from the collective of New York he lives in. Even though I knew in my heart that I was helping to create some of the most grotesque content on the planet. Going behind too much career safety and scaffolding in his past, we realize that what eats at John is a past of displeasing commercial shoots that eclipsed his life once upon a time. Thus, we are led deeper into the origins of an isolation in relation with the city life the groundwork for which is what led him in the first place into jumping out of the safety of a common man's job. But this also draws up a more specific theme, a loathing for rituals of consumerism that he has to deal with. In the same episode, John goes into a bar 
to chill out from the exhaustion of having to deal with scaffoldings everywhere. But then a Spider-Man film starts playing on the television, which again features heavy scaffolding in it. As time passes, the overthinker in John can't help but divorce himself with the constant bombardment of noisy, repetitive, and boring symbols of the city. In episode 3, John expands on how these capitalist symbols disorient users, highlighting all the ways in which he really feels left out and alone. They also recently demolished one of my favorite uh, movie theaters. How To's first season ends up journeying deep into the COVID-19 pandemic, giving us a fitting conclusion to all these themes of isolation. We now not only witness John's personal isolation, but a collective, worldwide isolation that leads us to all think and reflect. Isolation is a dangerous stage in the process of individuation, mostly because loneliness has the ability to shatter an individual. Very few today have the tolerance for it. But according to Jung, it is a necessary part to becoming yourself. It helps in nourishing the individual's uniqueness. A person must reject the herd in some way, shape or form to give rise to an independent mind. For it is only when John got rid of the scaffolding around him, when he started to get his own voice out. The pandemic at the end of the season seems to have reprioritized for John the people who matter to him the most. And it is heartwarming for us to see him reach out to them giving us closure in the idea that isolation was necessary and fruitful for John to march into the possibility of reconnecting with the world. Isolation led us into the internal world of John Wilson, his feelings, his desires, his voice. But how to with John Wilson expands these ideas into the external world? In this scene, John is trying to memorize a grocery list by connecting it to occurrences on his way to the supermarket. While this is a rather forced way to try to create meaning out of film shots in the street, it becomes an illuminating opening into making us realize what takes place throughout the series. Sometimes, the external world appears to coincide with what is going on in John Wilson's mind. When he goes to the grocery store as part of an exercise to understand memory, he ends up meeting a stranger who opens him up into the world of the Mandela effect, which strangely connects to discussion on memory as well as commercial brands. In this way, what starts as a funny exercise of trying to connect John's narrative to the footage thus ends up being much more significant to the journeys he goes on. This correlation in meaning formed between John's stream of consciousness and the symbols and patterns in the outside world is called synchronicity, and it is what serves as a mirror image between the internal voice and the outside world. As Carl Jung states, synchronicity takes the coincidence of events in space and time as meaning something more than mere chance. What one realizes after experiencing synchronicity is that there's a kind of madness and absurdity reflected both within and outside the individual, and the coincidence is what causes this form of resonance. In an intoxicating city, full of irony and happenstance, it can be very difficult to deal with such noisy and loud coincidences. Sometimes we start to overanalyze things. Well, we, I, I think we are, we have definitely been, my dear. We have been impregnated by, uh, we, have some, we are actually aliens. Leading us into conspiratorial thinking. Sometimes we start to over-identify with our own isolation and the past. You're, you're saying you were the second president of the United States? Correct. Leading to all forms of delusions. And so we come to realize that one has to remain balanced when walking the tightrope to becoming themselves. But John Wilson's almost zen-like approach becomes a therapeutic way of dealing constructively with the synchronicities observed by the mind. He places himself at the hands of whatever happens to him. The grand climax to synchronicity seems to take place just before the season 2 finale. In episode 5, titled 
how to remember your dreams this is my favorite episode because of the bizarre range of places it ventures into the episode shows john maturing in his creative process to have this uncanny conviction to pursue the crazy ideas in our head and manifest them into a reality in the outside world seems to be the pinnacle of synchronicity a voice that was once merely marveling the world outside is now turning his internal ideas into solutions that affect the outside world <laughs> you're a genius man you're a fact you're a genius in the hood with it i've been out here for 43 years and you, and it took Absolutely. it took this guy this fucking guy to come to the hood <laughs> with some genius shit hey, good Not fucking job fault, bro Thank you. The episode takes us through yet another chapter of John's past he wants us to forget but this time it reveals to us what he is being led into by life. We get to see him finally going to the place he always dreamed to go. The 1010 Winds radio station. This is 1010 Winds. Only to be disillusioned by the reality of his once dreamed non-fiction paradise. You don't know why you thought a place like this would make you happy being dejected by his desires he later stumbles onto a comic store leading him into a convention of avatar enthusiasts a place he least expected himself to be in a world that he once rejected but was presented to his arms by the wheels of fate guo jiang the taoist scholar considers the self as a thing that is self so meaning a thing that exists in itself spontaneously individuation asks us to isolate ourselves and reconnect to the external world meaningfully through synchronicity but how does a human being go about ultimately finding this self that acts spontaneously in this world being the season 2 finale of the series I feel like this is the only how to episode that John takes very seriously. He starts the episode by talking about how organized events are always problematic because they carry the risk of falling apart due to some reason or the other. And then he goes on to a random motel to spend a couple of hours with a friend who was busy at the moment and couldn't meet him. Then John cuts to an uncoordinated plan he had arranged for his girlfriend another plan that falls apart these set of failures lead john to arrive to a very interesting conclusion about the art of spontaneity almost every single thing you've ever recorded is the direct result of randomly being in the right place at the right time it is at this point in las vegas that john wilson stumbles upon a metaphor that kind of defines the thesis of this entire project All their performers are forced to stand inside tiny little circles or else they might get fined by the city. When performers, employees and the herd are made to exist in their tiny circles, how will people be themselves? At this moment, we realize the contrast between the people in front of the camera stuck in spots trying to make a living and the person behind the camera a person who has reached here through random wandering a man whose hbo series is produced by the legendary nathan fielder despite the fact that john belongs to no particular genre is owned by no particular corporation john wilson eventually finds himself in the middle of a heat wave this apparent disaster following the thread of previous failures leads john to randomly enter into an exhibition an exhibition lo and behold of event planners as an icing to all the irony we experienced up until this point john finds himself a place with the most spontaneous people where he least expected them to be turning out to be one of the best experience he has ever had in his life according to jung the process of individuation boils down to finding your place after you have rejected the collective found meaning in the unconscious by spontaneously reuniting with a landlord who cared deeply about him by finding an appealing capitalist after you have been dejected by capitalism you could say with some confidence that maybe 
you have found the place where you truly belong. I am really happy you found my video amidst the algorithms of the YouTube universe. At this point, I think you should consider hitting subscribe if this video resonates with you. And I wish you the best of luck if you decide to go on your journey to find yourself. John Wilson has taught me that sometimes it's crucial to be alone and experience the world as it is. Even though you might struggle to win back the world, you can always learn and relearn, build and rebuild. This essay has made me realize how close we are to this internal external world dynamic. We all love to make elaborate plans about what we should become and whose direction we should follow. But life gives you unexpected lessons and maybe your biggest mistake could be to overlook them by considering them failures or negative things to hide from. In the starry night, Van Gogh didn't constrain himself to replicating the outside world or communicate his internal world. He found a way to synchronize his feelings about the world the way he saw it, the way it played out to him spontaneously. That's the Van Gogh he found in himself and it's the one we see whenever his name comes up. If we wander daringly into the absurd worlds that present themselves to us, if we trust our voice even when it strays off the old, familiar paths, someday we will see ourselves as reflected in our pursuits and we won't ever have to look back. This is John Wilson. Thank you so much for watching. So do you really think How To is John Wilson's starry night? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this essay, I might have just the right essay on season 3 that I think you should check out now.